The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Tuesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And right now you have markets slightly negative territory, a little bit of volatility overnight. You're up to a high of 4405 quite the volatility yesterday into the close, basically trading right where we were near the close last night. And just now, though, getting a little bit of negative action. 4.30 a.m., you trade from 44.05 down to almost 43.70. We're approaching that area yet again, 43.78 lows at 3.45 yesterday, right? So the close yesterday about 43.90, but you see that that continuation right into the 4 o'clock bar till 4.15. 3.45, market was trading at about 40. 365. You made it all the way up to 4410 overnight. That's 45 S&P points. That is a 1% rise from 345 last night to basically 8 p.m. Eastern time. But since then, markets almost right back to where we were near the close last night. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by about 59 points. You look at yesterday's action into the close, as you see, almost right back to where we were at about 3.45 p.m. Eastern time in the NASDAQ 100, 13,854. Made it above 14,000 briefly at, again, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Dow this morning, negative 33 points, 34,279. You get the Russell flat. Crude. 104.72, we made it to a 109 handle yesterday. Crude backs off a bit into the close. We're continuing to back off at 104.68. Gold contract was above 2,000 yesterday. A little bit of a sell-off going on right now in gold. Gold spikes from 1982 to 1962. Gold off $23 on the session from yesterday. You got silver right now, negative 35 cents. Silver selling off as well. And we jump to notes and bonds. The trend is continuing, folks. You're talking about a yield right now, 2.92%. I mean, you got to imagine there's actually a chance over the next 52 minutes by 10 a.m., with the way that these things are moving, that you could get 3% by the time I'm off the air. You can definitely get 3% today when you're sitting at 2.915. That's the exact focus. Folks, let's round it up. 2.92%. Uh, not seen since late 2018. Last time we saw a yield on the 10-year that high. You back things up <clears throat> on a five-year weekly. And I believe there's the action. You're talking about November of 2018 when you had the 10-year uh, October of 2018 down to 117.13 right there on the 10-year, uh, right back to that area. And that is down all the way from about 139 to 140. And you maintain that area, folks, all the way from the beginning of COVID to basically October. Things really started accelerating in January of 21. Uh, boy, quite a remarkable chart. Let's back this up as far as we go and take it a look. So you had that low in 2018. Man, this chart, quite a reversal. You get below this level, though, 103, totally in game. Why not, right? And taking a look at the 30-year, you're down 25 ticks. I've talked about this one. Now, this one goes back to 1999, quite a trend line. You could even make the argument that this trend line should be a little bit higher to maybe pull in the linear regression of the low in 2013 along with the low in 2018. Uh, nonetheless, decisive break below that trend that you could argue has been in place for 22 to 23 years. We're seeing quite a substantial rise here, folks, and the market is reacting. Okay, let's jump around to some of the news out there this morning. And uh, we'll kick it off with this one, just sitting in the headlines over here as I had CNBC up. The, the IMF is going to cut global growth forecasts on the war, says risks to economy have risen sharply, projecting a 3.6% GDP. Excuse me, folks. For the global economy this year and for 2023, that's a 0.8% and 0.2% drop, respectively, from what they were just talking about in January before the war. Uh, sanctions will have severe impact on the Russian economy. Surprise, surprise, which estimated that the country's GDP will fall by 8.5% this year and 2.3% in 2023. Actually remarkable, that's all it is, folks, for all that was talked about. You're talking about... Uh, 
the Russian economy just going down 8.5% with all the companies pulling out and only 2.3% next year. That's not good, uh, to put it lightly. All right, let's see what else we have going on. One of the headlines out there, housing starts, right? Unexpectedly rise to the fastest pace since 2006. Construction, 1.79 million pace on multifamily projects. Number of homes under construction continue to rise in March. So 1.79 million starts climbed 0.3%. Applications to build climbed to an annualized 1.87. I mean, you look at these charts, which is what I want to pull up here. New comb construction rising in March, the highest level since 2006, man. It is just a constant rise. Building permits on the rise as well. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the strongest pace of multifamily home construction since January 2020. And when you get into the under construction, the number of total homes authorized for construction but not yet started, that's talking about permits rising 2.9%. I mean, pretty amazing numbers out here in the housing numbers, but the rates and, and the yields and what I just talked about with the tenure, my dad's been talking about it, and he makes a pretty solid argument, folks, because, man, when you look at I saw an article. I'll have to pull it up. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hanks after this break coming up. But I will find an article when, later in the program because it shocked me even what the interest rate rise already has done to payments. Uh, you're talking about potentially a 50% rise. And I believe the example in the article that I'm going to try and find had basically the median house price for a year ago or two ago. And that house rising from ballpark 300 to 350,000 median price. At the same time, you have rates rising from maybe two and a half to three percent to five percent. And that impact on a payment went from about 1,100 and change, call it even 1,200 to 1,800 dollars almost. You had almost a 50 percent rise in the monthly payment just for the median household buy. That is very difficult to support, folks. And I don't think rates may be done just rising just yet. I mean, you're talking about that the Fed wants to hike things 2.5 percentage points. We're still just sitting at a 30-year yield of 5%, just above 5%. That would correlate if you're hiking things 2.5%, where you had to come from about 2.5%. Mortgages weren't quite 2.5%. Maybe they were close, maybe they were but you get the point. It's it's very possible that they go up even from here, the yield. And uh, at some point, you will get a bounce, though. Jumping back, it's almost like you can't stress it enough. At some point, you will get a bounce. But, man, that is quite an accelerated point. And I anticipate at this time that we will touch 2.3% sometime in the near future because you're at 2.91 and market likes round numbers they say it lightly but they do all right let's jump around to some of the fang stocks as we come into this first break amazon shares you're basically flat today you jump over to apple shares all the markets are pretty close to flat down a bit uh let's jump over to netflix because i believe netflix out uh, with their numbers tonight after the bell netflix right now trading down a little bit again a little bit of a tough day for netflix yesterday accelerated higher into the close we'll take a look at netflix as well because netflix you're talking about a $31 move priced into their numbers, $35 of implied volatility just for the weekly options expiring Friday. That's a pretty decent move. That's more than a 10% move priced into options. We'll be coming back. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade. Folks, stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures negative by three points right now. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100 negative by 32. Dow and the Russell barely in the positive. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here at Tiger TV. Fast market with your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action, folks. They walk you through the day's stories. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups using options. Talking about defined risk in this market. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, we're off to another good start here in terms of uh, digesting a lot of economic data. You know, James Bullard came out yesterday afternoon with more hawkish tone. You know, he's consistent. We have to give him that. He's very consistent on his hawkish tone. But, Tommy, if any of your viewers are wondering why this market is struggling, all you have to do is look at a chart of the 10-year yield and look at a chart of the U.S. dollar. And those two metrics are working against the stock market. And especially it's working against the NASDAQ. And yesterday was a day of, you know, rallies and failures and rallies and failures. And at the end of the day, it was a very mixed, basically unchanged market. And so today uh, we'll get some earnings from Netflix, that, that, that'll be important. IBM used to be a lot more important than it is now when we get IBM out. But, you know, this is the market trying to figure out what it's going to do with these higher interest rates, because that move in interest rates, that move in the 10-year yield, it just makes it very difficult for stocks to get any momentum on the upside. And what, if you're, if you're looking for some reason to get hopeful about the market, if the 10-year stalls here, with the overall strength of the U.S. economy, that could be good for stocks. But we need this 10-year to um, slow its pace on the upside, Tommy. I put out on Twitter yesterday that we need the 10-year yield to pull a hamstring, Tommy. <laughs> Boy, it's, uh, it's firing on all cylinders right now to the downside in terms of price, Kevin. Yeah, I've got it up on a monthly even going back. And the chart I have on Thinkorswim goes back to 2003 at some point. And, man, you're back as they, the headlines show this morning. Uh, highest yield, 2.91% since 2018. And the steepness of that curve, man, of this acceleration. And right before you came on the air, Kevin, I had a three-minute break for the commercial. Uh, you... What was I doing? I was reading an article about Bullard's statements uh, as well. 
and 3.5% by the end of the year, which would be 50 basis points at every single meeting. And I actually chuckled. Um, but I chuckled, and I said, well, inflation's crazy in my head. I said, I don't know. Maybe it's possible, man. We'll find out. Uh, but the way the yield is moving, man, I talked about at the beginning of the show, it is remarkable. Uh, Netflix earnings, Kevin. So Netflix after the bell, uh, quite a pullback, man. You take a look at this thing on a daily, you're up to 700 bucks as recently as November. You're trading at 337. Kevin, we're always bringing new listeners, new viewers in. For those that are not familiar, on the Thinkorswim platform, because I've been talking about it a bit, Netflix, a pretty decent move priced in for a $337 stock. You jump over to the Analyze tab, uh, the yellow number here with the three M's. Can you explain that to the viewers? I got it at $31 right now for Netflix. Yeah, the market maker move, it's called. The, the, and it's a, right in the middle of the trade the, the trade tab, in the all products trade tab. Whenever the front month implied volatility, the front expiration, I should say, um, implied volatility, rises over the second expiration, in this case, the April 22 expiration, you see a 135 in terms of the implied volatility. Well, the April 29th is only a 91 implied volatility tommy so when it gets like that that triggers a an event risk move a one day move which is uh noted by the market maker move so that says that there's an event coming up that the implied volatility is telling us that there's an event and in this case as you know, it's earnings after the bell today. So right now there's a $31 expected one-day move. Now the move for the week that you'll get in the far right column of the Thinkorswim platform is only $34.80. Now that's up or down. That move in Netflix that we, we just talked about, $31, that is up or down. That's why you see the plus and the minus right ahead of the number. It's in either direction. The implied volatility is saying that there's a one-day expected move of $31 in either direction. Now, here's a very important part, Tommy. That's not the answer to the question. That's part of the question. The answer is when the event happens and the move happens, right? But sometimes it, it goes further. Sometimes it goes less. Sometimes it goes right there at that number. So, But that gives you a measuring stick to look at what that level of implied volatility shows about potential movement in the underlying. And then it allows you to set up option strategies. It's just one more tool to use to set up option strategies, Tommy. It's, it's a fascinating um, measurement and and you know, service on the Thinkorswim platform. It only is a tool, though, and it's not Bible, as you know. Man, you do such a great job of explaining that. Thank you so much. I've asked you a few times because I found it so useful myself, Kevin. I learned it from watching your program, man. Um, you know, trading options especially. Uh, so, and Netflix here, $31. And as you said, I'm glad you did because you go down the weekly. Uh, if you're trading this week, you know, you'd be trading the Friday expiration, April 22nd options, which those have $34.85 implied volatility. It's more than a 10% move, which is why I brought it up especially. And what's great is you make the point, um, in my mind, Kevin, right, I say I can do just some quick analysis of what kind of trades may be off the bat that you could do, right? So $35 in both directions. So if I wanted to sell volatility in either direction, maybe they're putting about a $17.50 implied volatility to the upside. I could sell a call spread maybe to the upside. Maybe I'd be able to take in there the markets implying about a $17.50 move, an iron condor. You got $35. What's so cool, though, is even if you own the equity, if you own stock right now, folks, you better be willing to know that as of Friday, the market's saying, hey, this thing can move about $35 in either direction right now. That's what the market's pricing in. Do you want to ride that out as an equity holder? Uh, I just think it's a great piece of knowledge, Kevin. I appreciate you talking about it so well, man. And, and I appreciate Thinkorswim having it on that platform. So we go forward with earnings. Netflix today. What are you guys going to be talking about on the program today, Kevin? We're going to look at three really good names, really high profile. Procter & Gamble in the first segment, the uh, consumer staple, comes out with earnings. Then, obviously, uh, Mike Fuller is going to do a presentation on Netflix, and then we'll trade nice. that in the second segment. And then IBM, Big Blue, will we'll trade in the th third segment. Not the Big Blue that it used to be, but certainly a name that everyone can recognize. So Procter & Gamble, Netflix, and IBM today, Tommy. 
Pretty cool, man. Kevin, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the education as always, man. And we'll be watching at 12 noon Eastern time today. You have a great one. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. Three great names, Procter & Gamble, Netflix, and IBM. Uh, I'm going to be watching Netflix, man, especially. Uh, and I do have even some Procter & Gamble in a retirement account as well. No IBM in that retirement account uh, just yet. IBM, it was interesting, pulling up the trend lines. Uh, in a possible downtrend there, but bumping up against the upper portion of that trend line, you see, and that's talking about a trend, folks, from 2013 on a monthly basis. Uh, Procter & Gamble, very strong stock. Check out that chart on a longer-term basis. Accelerating higher. Uh, you're at 157. You got an all-time high at 165. But Netflix, man, that's a lot of volatility priced into premium on these options when you got 10% for the week. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the SP S and P right now up three points, trading at forty three ninety. You see the drop off we had in the overnight session at four thirty, made it to a low about forty three seventy one. But as the markets open, just putting it back to a five minute chart, a little bit of a pop on the open. We got the Dow right now negative. Uh, excuse me, Nasdaq negative by forty, Dow positive by ninety three. So jumping back to Netflix, I was just playing it with a couple of trades, folks. Uh, I will look forward to see uh, how Kevin. 
Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, they do a great job if you're trying to learn options, folks. Check out that program if you get a chance. They set up hypothetical trades. <clears throat> the reason why I brought it up especially is because a 10% move in an equity geared around, and I'm talking about 10% when you put it on a weekly basis, all right, $34.63 right now. These numbers update only when markets are trading as well. 9.30 a.m. till 4 p.m. At 4 p.m., these numbers freeze. As of the close, they do not adjust overnight depending on how the equity is trading. Options only trade during market hours. That's one thing that's unfortunate because when you trade Netflix earnings, if you're trading them, the stock might do something out after hours, uh, and you cannot get out of that position until 9.30 the next morning. Important to consider. Uh, I'm sure there are ways there that you can offset that position, possibly with an equity purchase on the other side, but you cannot trade options nonetheless. Now, so $36.27, the number's actually going up right now. You have Netflix dropping again. You're down $3 right now, down a full percent, and that's as the market's trading higher. This thing's been dropping. Yesterday, I was looking at it as well, dropped on the open. Uh, so possible trades when you see this, right? Do you think Netflix has a huge move in either direction? Well, very quickly, with an implied volatility of $36, there's an $18 move on either side if you're trading options that you need to make up just to make up the implied volatility that is priced into that equity. So if you want to be buying options, if you want to buy a call, okay, for instance, you go to April 22nd, the ones that expire this Friday, we're going to scroll down to an at the money, which is about 335. Okay, and there you go. A call, 335, about $17 or so. Right, and you're 75 cents lower. That's a little bit of a di divergence. Uh, 332.50 call, that's coming in at about $18 and change. That's a hefty move, and you have to be directionally correct, all right? So if you're buying a call, number one, there's theoretically a 50% chance it's going to go up or down. So automatically, you're going to lose about 50% of the time or less if you have some type of advantage. And then you need the stock to move at least $18 to make any money. Now, when I see a move that's that large, okay, $36 and I don't have an inherent bias, which you can have, and this is where biases come into things, folks, okay? Personal biases come in. As Kevin says, that's that's not the answer. That's not gonna walk you through how to make money. You know, seeing this number and seeing the implied volatility isn't the end of the equation, okay? The answer is when things come out, you find out the move versus the implied move, and basically who was right and who was wrong. Who was paying for volatility? Who was selling volatility? If you would be selling volatility on this, okay, which in my opinion becomes attractive when you got more than a 10% move, because you can be wrong to a hefty degree if you're selling premium, and then what you can do is you can sell it directionally. So let's say you say, all right, if anything, I think Netflix is going to stay flat to go higher, okay? This stock has been beaten down, and this is just a theoretical, folks. I have no trade in this for the earnings event, okay? Do have a small portion of Netflix in retirement. No earnings event trade yet, but it's possible today in my newsletter. If you'd like to check it out, head on over to CFNN.com. Say, maybe it's pulled back too much, and I'm, I'm looking at all these options, so it's kind of nice I'm walking myself through this because I wanted to do this anyway just for myself for trading, okay? Let's see what type of trades we can set up as all the market's sneaking into the positive right now, but Netflix still down about three quarters percent. Now, this thing, of course, it can go lower, folks. Quite a reset in multiples we have going on, but you're talking about a company now valued at about $150 billion, I think. Yeah, 149.5, exactly, okay? $150 billion. Uh, how low can this go? It can go lower. It can. I think my dad was out there yesterday saying maybe it's going to 286. Where do you get that number from? Maybe 287. Maybe he's talking about this low out here. Uh, even that number, though, is just barely outside of the $34 move implied for this type of trade. If you trade an iron condor, you get that $34 in either direction. But I'm going to do a trade. Let's just say that you, that you say, all right, you know, I don't necessarily think it's gonna go dramatically higher. I'm not willing to pay the premium when you got an $18 move priced in just upside if I'm directionally positive, all right? But I think the drastic chance that this does spike dramatically lower in the earnings tonight, considering it's more than cut in half already just over the last five months, let's say if we sell a put spread, all right? So let's look at selling a put spread. Now you can jump to the, what's great, folks, you can be in the trade tab, okay? You can be in the analyze tab. If you're setting up these trades, it's pretty cool being in the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform. This is some of the stuff they do go over. The reason why I understand it well is because of Kevin's program, watching it. 
the analyze tab and then the risk profile setup everything when it's visual is a little bit easier to understand okay so you say all right it's got a $33.50 move for the earnings. It's got a $36 move right now for the week. So that means it's pricing in $18 in either direction. Let's say if I go out and sell a put spread away from the market by about 20 bucks. It's about $2 away from the move directionally. Okay, that it could have. You could go further because it's telling you right now it can go either direction, 33 bucks if you're not going to be directional. But let's just see what type of a trade setup is. You're at 33.35. Let's say, man, you give it, say, $20. I can see you go down 20 bucks. It's going to be hard for this thing to go down substantially. And again, this is not my opinion, folks. I haven't made it yet. Uh, but you could see how a rational person could make this opinion. I'm sure there's some people that have this bias out there. And it's kind of cool to walk through how to set up this trade potentially. If you say, I'm not willing to pay the premium for an upside move. But geez, I really think there's a lot of premium assigned to the negative action below this price level. And I don't think Netflix has the chance that the market is assigning for it to trade through that level. I want to be the one that's going to absorb that premium to the downside. And I am going to be the one that's going to be responsible for the price action if Netflix accelerates through that price. Okay, so let's go $20 out and see what kind of a price sets up. We would be selling somebody else the right to basically sell Netflix at 315. So we're selling a 315 put. And let's see what happens if we give it $10 of action. So what this trade does is we have sold a 315 to 310 put spread. For that right that we're selling somebody, we take in $1.47 in credit. Our maximum profit for this trade is $1.47 for this trade. Okay, these are the types of trades they set up at noon, folks, too, if you're into options. This is why I wanted to kind of go over it. Now, what is our max loss in this trade? Our max loss is we cover the price action from 315 to 310. That would result in a $5 loss, all right? And let's just push it down to one single contract, which is 100 shares, to make it as easy as possible, okay? So when you jump over to the risk profile, our max loss is the $500 that we would lose by covering the price action from 315 to 310 minus the credit we receive initially. And let's just put it to 140 for simple math because it's chopping around, okay? So our max loss is 360. Our max profit is 140. So what are we doing? We're, we're risking about 2.5 to make one, right? 280, yeah, almost, almost exactly. Uh, we're risking $2.50 for every dollar that we make in a potential profit. The cool part about that is, is that even if this stock, folks, okay, moves 20, 25 30 dollars tomorrow there is still some value in this that it's not a complete loss okay because this these options have value through friday so always you'd be surprised sometimes when there's this much of an applied move in where that volatility assigns i encourage you to check out a demo account folks on think or swim we'll just finish up this conversation when we get back talking a little netflix earnings tonight stay tuned folks are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the bay area including the surrounding st petersburg tampa and clearwater markets tiger real estate llc is a firm that has extensive experience in the tampa bay area whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 8 right now. NASDAQ 100, negative by 34. So just finishing up the conversation. You can do this on the demo accounts, folks. I would encourage you to do it. You can follow along with Thicker Swim on Fast Market every day at noon here on Tiger TV. Because uh, the cool part about it is you say to yourself, okay, so I get $20 of action. Well, what if I think $20, you know, Netflix has got some volatility, man. What if I want to go out $30? What if I want to go out $30? What kind of a premium can I absorb if I go out $30 as opposed to going out $20? $30 is going to be a less likely move, of course, over 20 Again, you have the stock right now trading at 336 so it would be about 305 Let's call it 310 maybe. That's $27 of action. So what you do is you would sell the 310 and then giving yourself the same $5 spread. This time you're still taking in a dollar twenty-five as opposed to a dollar forty. That might be a more attractive trade, depending on what kind of market move you're expecting around options. Um, even if you're trading equities, folks, okay, understanding the implied move coming into earnings. All right, if you own equities coming into earnings, they're an, they're an event. They're an event where you reveal basically the sales, earnings, and data of the previous 30, uh, 90 days of a company. And understanding the implied moves in the stocks that you're holding is a volatility that you are sus sus susceptible yourself to. Uh, it's pretty cool. I encourage you to check it out. You can do the same thing if you have a reverse scenario. Let's say you say that there's no way that Netflix bounces. They were way too high priced. You could be the one selling a call spread. Or if you have no directional trade at all, you can be the one selling both, which combine into something like an iron condor, which then gives you the $36 implied move that the market is pricing in. It's pretty cool once you understand it and the visual aspect of the analyze tab, and then you pull up the risk profile. I mean, you got probability analysis in here, folks. It's pretty cool. This tells you, right, with Netflix right now, trading at 336 and change, how many days you go out, where on the chart the implied volatility brings this thing. When you're talking about going out uh, June 19th of 22, you're talking about $248 maybe is in terms of a one standard deviation move. Um, no, that's is that two? Yeah, I'll have to pull that one up. But it, it's great information. I encourage you to check it out, folks. S&Ps are catching a bid right now as we speak as well. S&Ps right now up by 16 points. Let's put it back on a 15-minute chart. There's a pop for you. We're coming into right where we were at the close, right where we were in the overnight session, 4404 right now in the S&P. Let's jump down to that gold contract. Gold down about 17 bucks, but catch us a little bit of a bid off of 1960 and check out where the notes and bonds are going. A little bit of a bid, you could call it. 11902 to 11908 right now. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other stories I have up here. Let's see. Uh, of course, we have the yields, 2.91%. Highest level for yield since late 2018. 
Yeah, Apollo is interested. So they, you know, Elon will be able to find a backer, folks. I'm just going to touch on it. Uh, not surprising that he is going to be able to get a backer for this. Uh, I would guess that he has a plan, and he is not a hard man to believe in in terms of what he's done with those companies as long as he has a financial plan. And he would probably be able to do it himself if he wanted to, but he's going to have backers, it looks like, and Apollo is the first one. But they want to be the only one in the mix. They don't want to share the action. Um, yeah, Russia's found no place to put their reserves so Russia boosted share of the euro, won, while cutting dollar in its international reserves. You get the share of the U.S. dollar. Now, this goes back to 2018. You see a little bit of a divergence here over the war. Euro spiking, the won staying standard uh, set at 13, and the dollar actually decreasing. It's pretty intense what's going on with Russia over there. I mean, it's tough not to talk about the... The war in Donbass now is the region, so we will see. Uh, so it is April 19th, folks, and a spring nor'easter made up 10 inches of snow in Pennsylvania, New York. I know we got a lot of listeners in the northeast, uh, upstate New York and far northeast Pennsylvania. So you're talking about upstate uh, as well as parts of Vermont, though, and Massachusetts. Uh, weather alerts from the Appalachians through upstate New York. So not sure it's going to be uh, good old Boston, maybe a little bit of Western Mass, beautiful Appalachians, upstate New York, Far East Pennsylvania. Nonetheless, you're talking about 5 to 10 inches, man. It is April 19th. We're almost coming into May. I don't even have to tell you how hot it is, unfortunately, right now in Florida. But we can't complain, folks, because we have those beautiful winters. We still got some beautiful beaches. It is very, very warm in Florida. Uh, just going through Easter, man. I got a little Easter duck. My dad gave uh, Easter duck to the kid, uh, chocolate ducks. And, man, they were melting in no time at the parking lot. We had to get them in the car because it was so hot. But, hey, nonetheless, pretty remarkable you're seeing that type of weather. All right, let's jump down the line as we come into this break in a few minutes. Netgear, down big. Uh, networking equipment maker reported weaker than expected results. Cut its current quarter forecast, pointing to weaker U.S. market for Wi-Fi equipment. Uh, this one I don't understand the fundamentals of. Uh, NETG, right? NTGR. So you catch a little bit of a bid on the open. You're down 8%, though. You put this thing on a three-year weekly. Yeah, and watch out, folks. Um, I mean, this is coming right into the lows we had of 15 bucks for the COVID lows. You are below where you were prior to the pandemic. It's backing up even further. Yeah, that's a tough deal, man. And I don't know if maybe they're just not necessary in the way they once were. But nonetheless, uh, Wi-Fi equipment not panning out. WeWork is rallying after the office sharing company got an upgrade to overweight. Looks like the, the pain may be uh, over. Confidence in the path to profitability and how well flexible office model fits a post-COVID world. Yeah, I mean, people are getting back to the office, but in a two to three day setting, I would say. Seems like the ideal situation going forward. Seems like it's ideal in terms of keeping a relationship with the workers and also ideal and being able to have a couple days off at home where you can still be as productive as you may be in the office. Halliburton's a little bit lower. They were out with their numbers. They beat, but they earned, uh, yeah, a penny share above estimates is all it does. Oil field services equipment remained high. Yeah, they closed at a three and a half year high. That's it, HAL. This is going to be quite a chart on a long-term basis. There you go. 425 at the COVID lows, and uh, it's basically a 10-bagger. You're up to 41.41, and check it out. You actually get it all back. Look at that. So much for being lower, man. A little bit of a sell-off right now, but you were down to 39.50, and we just hit 42.30. Uh, that's an all-time high for Halliburton after they come out with their numbers and we're lower. Man, this market, watch out, folks. 4403, S&P's up 16. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see what's trading. Amazon shares up about two tenths percent right now. Apple shares down a quarter percent right now. We also get Tesla tomorrow. So Tesla right now, 1,010. You jump over to the Analyze tab on Tesla. You take a look at the risk profile, uh, excuse me, simulated trades. You're talking about a $53 move. So this is interesting, right? That's why Netflix jumped out at me. You got a 10% move in Netflix, and they do have a lot of volatility right now. Uh, the market's very worried that their user acceleration is slowing. That's been part of the drop-off from 700 to 340. So there's extreme volatility priced in, but Tesla's been very, very volatile as well. And Netflix has almost a double percentage move premium priced in versus Netflix uh, versus Tesla, excuse me, as in Tesla's about a 5% move and 
Netflix is about 10% move. So Tesla out with their numbers tomorrow. Netflix out with their numbers today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at IBM as well. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps charging higher. We're up by 29 points right now. You get the Dow up 272, Russell up 16, NASDAQ 100 up 69 points. Taking a look on a daily basis, uh, nothing too exciting to get excited about, I should say. Uh, as you were just up at 4,600, we are up on two consecutive sessions. But, man, we're hanging out near the lows of these sessions right now. You've been chopping around at about 4,400 since April 12th. One week ago, we're sitting right now at 4,415. Did make it down to a low, though, of 4,355 on yesterday's bar. We jump over to the Dow. Dow up 276 right now, 34,589. Crude backing off a bit. We'll put it back on a 15-minute. And let's jump to notes and bonds. 
because they are driving the action higher, folks. You got the 10 year sitting right basically at the lows of 119.06 right now, but the market is popping. You got the S&Ps up by 30 points. I said we'll talk about IBM. IBM catching a bid. You're up 1% right now. We jump over to IBM. They are out with their numbers tonight after the bell as well. You're talking about a $5.84 move for $127 stock. So again, not too much volatility priced into this equity. We take a look at IBM on a longer term basis though. I talked about this one when Kevin brought it up. Uh, I would be careful here, folks. You're at the upper portion of a trend line. You got a couple highs matching up. You got a couple lows matching up on the lower portion of that. And uh, IBM just been chopping around for a while. I mean, you're at the same prices of IBM. You were trading at at the beginning of 2016 right now at 127.56. And folks, remember, you had just got basically almost cut in half at that time from 206 as recently as 2013. Yeah, and you're trading right now at 127 still. But IBM, out with their numbers, not too much volatility priced into that equity. And we'll finish it up with Tesla. Why not? Talking about Tesla, I know. Pretty remarkable. Uh, the value of this company versus the value of the other companies in terms of GM, Ford, and the likes. Tesla, up 0.9% right now. They are out with their earnings tomorrow. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man, Basil Chapman. He's uh, coming up live next. Then, of course, Larry Pesvento live at 11. Fast Market coming up at 12. They're going to be talking Procter & Gamble. They're going to be talking Netflix. And they're going to be talking about IBM at noon. Uh, Steve Rhodes at 1 o'clock. Dave White live at 2 o'clock. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Have a great Tuesday.